Welcome to the channel, I'm Mr. Steve, and here I do tutorials that are focused mainly on add-ons, on creation, and then general tutorials about Blender and the interface and how to do things. I've actually created now a second YouTube channel if you want to go over and support that one, and it's going to be focused mainly on Blender updates and nothing else. I'll still do some of the major updates here on this channel just to keep you guys in the loop. So hit that notification bell for updates so you don't miss a single thing. Now let's jump on into the video. One of the most notable things going on right now with Blender 4.0 and of course 3.6 would be simulation nodes. I'll put a link in the description so you can see not only uh, how you can pick up this blend file on the Blender website, but I'll link some tutorials down below that will help get you started in learning how to implement simulation nodes inside of Blender. Alright guys, let's start off with one of the most important things you're going to need to know about Blender 4.0. They have a backwards compatibility issue that is actually intentional. The compatibility is going to be Blender 4.0 cannot be opened by anything else but Blender 3.6. Blender 3.6 can open 4.0. 3.5 and below, zero compatibility. The API has been changed. There's a bunch of different uh, referencing things within the code, and it's not going to allow you to open any of your previous projects. So when Blender 4.0 is fully implemented, when you open anything, you can only use 3.6. But the good news is, Blender 3.6 LTS is out and fully functional and it's stable and you won't have data loss, but expect severe data loss if you try to open any files under Blender 3.6. Now, anytime I'm using Blender 4.0, you'll see all of the blue and orange Blender colors in my tabs. Now, if we go over to edit and go to preferences, uh, you're going to see under the interface, if you check on developer extras and then go down to experimental, You've got a list of different things here that you can enable to go through. You've got the Grease Pencil 3.0, the uh, overlay, and the Workbench Next is something that's coming very soon. And of course, it is experimental, just like EV Next right now. You've got some new curve tools, point clouds. And even though it's Blender 3.6 related, which is still relevant, the new uh, mesh to volume node is going to now produce an actual volume instead of a VDB. So that's important to know. So let's just jump over here real quick and we'll look at the mesh to volume node I discussed just a moment ago. And if we drop this in, we can instantly see this is so much better than that blob that we had before whenever we would go mesh to volume. And if we go ahead and throw in a volume to mesh, that is absolutely amazing. I really, really like how that looks. Um, I don't know how you get too much better than that other than you know tweaking the actual adjustments yourself, but that is a really good jump from where it was. And we can even throw in a set shade smooth and we'll kind of look at this You can play it around with it just a little bit till you get something nice. And that's actually a volume. So there's a lot you can do with this overall. Really cool. And you can come over here and check the release notes for that as well, because there'll be some more data on that. And of course it is super fast, a lot faster. Now I'm going to jump back over and I'm in Blender 3.6. So this upgrade is not in 3.6, this is 4.0, but just to give you kind of a comparison, if we drop this in, it's a very similar setup uh, with some bevels and some insets, and we really just don't see any of those complexities in here, no matter what you do with the densities. And I'll just switch back over, you can see how this is looking uh, quite nice. And so awesome so you can see that there's a, a speed increase here that really allows you to do a lot more and i would say that because of that you're not going to have as many crashes when you're working around with volumes nor lagging at all and if i mute this out and bring up the uh, density you can see the viewport isn't hanging up and i can bring the voxel size up or down pretty much do whatever i want 
and kind of tweak things. And I'm still not losing performance because it's many times faster. Also, and also, if you were to come in to the files uh, and save area, you will now see that if you go ahead and save your file, and I can just give it any kind of name real quick and save it, and then come back, I can now save incrementally. And now even though that's been available for a little while, just so you don't miss it, that's gonna be an important update. And also opening recent, you can now have up to 30 open recent files in here. And that's not new either, but it's something noteworthy as it could produce a little less stress when you're looking for some certain files. Also, another thing from Blender 3.6, if you did not know, the end panel doesn't scrunch up anymore it'll still display everything correctly. So if you scroll up another screen, everything will still be visible and it won't scrunch up and be outside of your visibility, which is important. Of course, as always, the Blender 4.0 release notes are available to everyone so you can go through and look. And we can just start from the top, animation and rigging. You're gonna have the new Butterworth smoothing filter and the improved draw and locked F curves. And so there's going to be some uh, definitely big upgrades going on in 4.0 as uh, the Blender developers decide to move forward with a more industry compatible setup that's gonna make your workflow very smooth. And also you have some breaking backward incompatibility changes, which would be your one through nine hotkeys for switching collections, visibility, and removing from the pose mode, which is a big deal if you have any files like that, but they're not compatible from previous versions anyways. So you're gonna need to start over with some new files. And other breaking changes under the core would be that the depth pass for support was removed from the open EXR. And the library override has a few fixes and apparent bugs and some things they're still working on, cleaning up the code and handling lookups and different items. Now we also have the viewport compositor, which got some huge updates in Blender 3.6 and the following nodes are now supported because a list of them were not supported and they were gaining traction as the development for 3.6 LTS was moving on. You have the movie distortion, the sunbeams, the keying, and of course the compositor now has support for the following node previews. Now back over into Blender 4.0, this is actually an add-on I made called B-Box, and this one is actually available on the Blender market, and this isn't a plug for it, but just so you can understand, uh, when you were to come in here and you want to see what's going on with, say, a curved circle or anything else, Control, Shift, and left click is going to give you a viewer node and show you exactly what is going on. Now, this is not necessarily a new update, but is relatively new in the 3.6 era. So, whenever you're coming in here, you can now Control, Shift, right click, and end up uh, representing different data outputs and see where things are in the node graph and if it's not making sense then you can rectify it now this is a little bit of a pain so you can actually just select that viewer node and then hit delete to get everything back the way it was so the curve to mesh got a significant update as well as far as speed and it's going to depend on the uh, whether it's a single point and the origin being at the center and a couple of other things, but I'll let you guys check that out as well. And there also are some big changes with how lights are going to be perceived in the 3D viewport. And one of those things is listed here. The point light is going to be a little bit different for the energy conversion. All right, let's grab a point light and go down to visibility under the object settings. And we can go ahead and check on the camera and we'll see that we can automatically now turn the point light into a mesh light. And then if you render that, just so you know, that is going to show up in the render. And so you'll be able to see that. Now if we turn off the visibility, and I also have this button inside of the LM Studio add-on as a visibility for that light, so it can, the compatibility of my add-ons goes from 3.6 up to 4.0. And if you went ahead and rendered that again, you will see the light that the point is providing, but you will not see the mesh light. And that should resolve any issues and put away any fears that you're gonna have a mesh light poking out from everywhere inside of your renders. All right, and we have another noteworthy update under the edit and the preferences. 
And we go under File Pass, and I'll just pull this out so we can see it. We now have the text editor where you can externally edit your code. You can have arguments as well instead of using the base scripting workspace uh, provided by Blender, which is, you know, it's okay, but ultimately you want to have something external, something more powerful that you're using. Now you can do that. All right, guys, that's it for now. I really appreciate you watching and hanging in there. All these updates are still coming in, and 4.0 is going to be the biggest deal of Blender right now. Blender 3.6 LTS is out. Make sure to hit that bell so you get all the updates on time and don't miss anything. Stay in the loop, smash that subscribe, smash that like, and I'll see you guys in the next update.